This leads us to the Jacobi iteration. The Jacobi iteration says that I'm going to iterate according to this. So uk plus 1 minus uk at the ith grid point. Now remember this is now grid point dependent. Divided by a delta ti is equal to my a times u um, so how should I write it uh, let me just uh, say a times uk at grid point i okay plus v i and my 1 over delta ti is chosen to be the diagonal element of a okay so, for example, what does this mean if my a is equal to uh, the, 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 the actually equal to the, 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 I think I have to have a um, I have to have a minus sign here. Yeah, I have to have a minus sign here. Sorry, yeah, a uh, minus sign of a i i. So, so if a is the finite difference Poisson's equation solver right uh, in this case I actually get a special case for every diagonal element is the same so my 1 over delta ti is actually going to be after taking the minus I have 2 over delta x square which means my delta ti has to be delta x square over 2 and this is, uh, if you remember the CFL condition, right? This is uh, this is how much. Actually, this is not exactly. This is half of how much you can take before the system would go unstable. This is half or completely. Um, but anyway, so so this is very related to to the to the CFL condition where how much you can take before the system goes unstable. Another case is when you have uh, uh, have the first order finite difference where no finite difference for solving a first order equation where you have one over delta x minus and uh, uh, one of uh, one over delta x plus on the other side, right? So if you have this is for discretizing the first order derivative du dx, then you would have um, so this is with this example. For this example, you have 1 over delta ti is going to equal to 1 over delta x, which gives you delta ti equal to delta x. Again, the CFL condition, right? That's how much you can take before the system would go unstable. So this is a very informed way of taking a time step for different grid point. And if I write it down in a more um, in this way, so if I, for example, if I can decompose A into a diagonal and off-diagonal components, the off di the diagonal is only the entries of A at the diagonal. The off-diagonal is zero on the diagonal, and we ha would have non-zeros on the lower and upper diagonals. Then this is the equivalent of saying. This is 1 over delta ti is uh, equivalent to uh, uh, saying I have minus d. So the left hand side is transformed from minus d times uk plus 1 minus uk. Right? This is by just uh, taking this 1 over delta t. And uh, that's equal to a times uk plus b. All right, and just to look at this entry, uh, this part, it actually cancels the diagonal part on the right-hand side. So the system becomes d times u k plus 1 equal to o d times u k plus b. Okay, and this is Jacobi iteration. 
it's almost the saying that uh, another way to derive it is I have a u plus b equal to zero, and I decompose it using d plus okay I decompose it a into d plus o d so I have d times u plus o d times u plus b is equal to zero, and I just assign a index k to here and assign a index k plus one over here, and just iterate until uk and uk plus one are equal, then I solved the system. But this, this I see is, a, is a, a how a lot of places introduce the Jacob iteration, but like it feels a little bit like a, a y, right? And uh, so, so coming from the time integration, I think is a lot more intuitive way of uh, deriving the Jacobi iteration. Okay. Does it make sense of uh, what you actually do? Yes? Yes, the fact that, okay, so first of all, does this even converge or not is not guaranteed. You can prove, uh, so you can prove, or sometimes you can't prove, but it does converge for a lot of PDE cases. And, and I think it's because of the CFL condition. Right? It's because the Jacobi iteration is actually equivalent of taking a time integration if you add a first order DDT term. And then you choose the time step size to be inverse proportional to the diagonal element. And another thing is, if, you, if you, for some PDs, if just the doing Jacobi iteration doesn't converge, right? It's also useful to think of it in this way. Just to think of what is kind of the equivalent time step you are taking by looking at the diagonal element. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. For example, if you discretize a first order uh, derivative using central difference, what will be the diagonal? Zero, right? So in that case, does it actually make sense to use Jacobi iteration? No, right? It, you get a huge time step that is for sure going to be unstable. So in that case, you may want to modify Jacobi iteration a little bit so that your delta t actually do corresponds to what you would be using for CFL condition, right? So I think it's a, a lot more useful to think it uh, uh, in, in, in this way.